and great to be with you. I'm Leslie Wilson from the Office of Experience Transformation, and I'm so happy to join you again for a short check-in and exploration of our experience intentions. I know this has been an unusual time to take on a new job and join a new organization during a pandemic, but I hope you've had a chance to connect with new colleagues, whether that be in person or virtually, and you have a sense of belonging on our team. And by doing that, I also hope you're even more excited and more confident that you truly made the right choice joining UC San Diego Health, where we are leading the way to a new kind of healthcare experience. And while we know this has been a time of great change, we hope that our passion for the experience we create for our team members, patients, and guests has started to come to life for you. At UC San Diego Health, our experience intentions are a force for unifying, a bridge for connecting, a lens for seeing, and a new path for discovering. In our last session, we shared simple ways for each of us to bring our intentions to life every day. For unifying, we asked, strive to foster partnerships, express gratitude, and look for the best in others. For connecting, it was take time to connect with others and learn people's unique stories and take time to share your own. For seeing, we asked you to consider that when you move about your work, that you notice details as you are seeing our places and experiences for the first time. Help others know they are seen and that they matter. And for discovering, we invited you to practice empathy when interacting with your team members, patients, and guests discover opportunities to design experiences with what you find. I'm eager to know how you've put these into practice in your own work and would love to hear how it's going. You can always email us at experiencetransformation at ucsd.edu. We love to collect stories, share gratitude, and stay connected with you. Our intentions unifying, connecting, seeing and discovering provides structure to how we approach our work and our interactions and are meant to be a practice. It's something we can bring to life in our own way every single day. And when I think about everything our amazing team at UC San Diego Health has done across this pandemic, I can say wholeheartedly, that I am filled with hope for our future. And with people like you on our team, that hope continues to grow exponentially. Mom, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Thank You're you. Good. Okay. Yes, yes. This is a message to kids around the world. I want to show your artwork at the Guggenheim. We're gonna need more bags. Kids, if something happens to us, bail us out. Okay, so we are in, and uh, I got the tube, and uh, that's one of the benefits of wearing a large coat. And uh, we have a lot of the art. Look at this place. Look at this place. Settle down. Settle down. So, from here on out, these kids can say their work has been shown at the Guggenheim. 
take it easy on me. Okay, so we're trying to find the exact place to go. Uh, but I'm willing to admit that it's for the kids. theme is really clear from this artwork is love. <laughs> Hope is definitely connected to the family and, and between people. For me, you know, they're happy. It reminds me of how much I love watching my kids do art. I used to like to make stuff like this too. And I wish I still did. And just listen to the quiet That wild rippling sound And you find that you Yes, and you find that you're now Cause there's only so much time in the day there's Check it out! So much yeah, they told me to do this. They told me, they told me to do this. There's an alarm going an alarm. off. We're just, we're just, yeah, we're just taking a quick photo. Yeah. Wait. Thanks. Yeah, we're just taking a quick photo. Cool. We're gonna go. I don't know what we did, but something. Hope is where we are. Throughout this pandemic, we've seen how UC San Diego Health and healthcare as a whole has been a beacon of hope for people the hope for health, the hope for connection, the hope for finding our way to a safe, COVID-free future. I'm excited to share how we are bringing our intentions to life every day in big ways and small ways, both within our organization and throughout our community, sparking hope and possibility and doing everything we can to bring an end to the pandemic. There are hundreds of amazing stories, and so I want to highlight just a few ways that our team members are unifying with one another and our community, connecting through interactions and voices across the organization to better serve our patients, truly seen in a way that makes the invisible visible, and discovering new innovations, processes, and experiences that make us 
truly exceptional. Let's start with unifying. 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 The pandemic has forced us apart in so many ways through physical distance, through face masks and face shields, and through isolation. With the vaccine, we have a new beacon of hope and possibility. And we had to figure out what it would take to support the 4 million people in our community seeking a vaccine. And one solution was all about coming together as a community. UC San Diego Health, in partnership with the County of San Diego and the Padres, created the first of its kind drive-through vaccination superstation. Working across clinical departments, information services, registration, facilities, both internally and externally, we partnered to imagine how to begin to vaccinate our community at scale and create a safe, efficient, and memorable experience for the San Diego community. It was so exciting and I had to go down there because I wanted to share this with you. I took my selfie stick and camera and captured some amazing work. And so I wanna show you the ways that every single day we are unifying with our team members, patients and guests to vaccinate and give hope for what's ahead. I spent time with Lydia Ikeda and Edgar Rodriguez, our incredible colleagues who are orchestrating all vaccination sites across UC San Diego Health. Let's check it out. I'm here today at Petco Park, just steps away from where you can see in a unique collaboration between UC San Diego Health, the Padres Petco Park, the city and county of San Diego, where we're bringing in healthcare workers from across the community to vaccinate them against COVID-19. It's such an amazing example of how every single day, UC San Diego Health is leading the way for our team members, patients, and guests. Excellent, and so has there been one great example of teamwork that you saw? I mean, it's, it's probably hard to pick with the yeah. hundreds of collaborative examples every single day, but partnership or something that stood out to you? Yeah, you know, we, um, we've occasionally run into uh, you, the issue where at the end of the day when we have extra doses that we need to uh, use in order not to waste them and you know everyone just kind of pitches in and jumps on and stays late and helps us out vaccinate um, other healthcare workers and you know we've been here until 10 11 o'clock at night and no one complains everyone's happy to be here and, you know it's you know just a huge teamwork well thank you for leading the way for uc san diego health i know you're super busy so i'll let you get back to work thank you, thank you Leslie. edgar i'm here with dr kingston and dr <laughs> kingston so one of our ob physicians as well as one of our um, anatomy. Anatomy, anatomy professors and so um you've both spent time here together today on a Sunday, um, leading the way for UC San Diego Health and the community. Um, what are you most proud of today? Um, just having the opportunity to help out uh, all these people, 5,000 people a day, roughly, uh, getting the vaccination and uh, just making progress against uh, COVID-19. Absolutely. And so um, what's it like for UC San Diego Health to really set the the tone and lead the way for our community in this fight against COVID-19? Well, I, I hope we're setting a good example, uh, educating patients, uh, as it, in addition to just administering the vaccine, uh, just helping people um, uh, you know, get vaccinated as quickly as possible, uh, helping them feel comfortable and well-informed about it, uh, and setting a good example for the rest of the nation. Absolutely. Yeah. And getting other health systems to recognize and, and lead by example and hopefully energizing them to do the same thing with, with their group of patients, not only locally, but regionally and across the country. Excellent. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one last question. So I, I know it's a drive-through setting, which is different, Dr. Kingston, than the time you usually get to connect with patients in, in a clinical setting. Um, how is how have you been able to connect in a short span of a drive-through? Um, making eye contact, finding out where people come from and, and what they do for a living. Um, we can do that in just a few seconds and it goes a long way. Well, thank you both for leading the way here at UC San Diego Health. Thank you. 
is Lori Herman. She is the assistant trauma manager for trauma surgery and Angela Hilty, I hope I say that right, trauma program manager. And they volunteered to learn our onboarding process and the check-in process for this weekend. It's really, really helped out and brought this whole team together this weekend. And just very grateful for that. Are there special moments of joy or team member collaboration or anything you've witnessed that you wanted to share and you're proud of? I'm very proud of our staff. They've come together and they've been so willing to take on whatever role that we ask of them. We've got doctors willing to be runners. It's, it's really inspiring to watch how people just want to help in any capacity that they can. I love that. The thing that gave me the most joy was hearing um, people come up here and say, I finally get to do something to take care of this problem. I've been taking care of people who are so sick. This feels really good to be on the other side. So as wiped out as they are, they're still here and it's amazing. Yeah, so I'm just proud of UC San Diego Health and being a leader in the community. We have people driving up and they're literally crying once they get vaccinated. They're just so grateful, as you mentioned, Leslie. So um, I'm just proud to be part of this team. So Lydia, thank you every single day for leading the way at UC San Diego Health. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This is what unifying is all about coming together as an organization in support of our community, building processes and systems which makes collaboration easier, and understanding that when we do things together, we can accomplish so much. And what we receive back from the community is a sense that we're a part of something larger than ourselves and that we're in this together. It's a wonderful reminder that we've all shared common experiences, finding our way through stay-at-home quarantining and experiencing the fear, challenges, and hardships. And now here we are with a shot of possibility, the outpouring of gratitude, positivity, and ultimately hope from our community has been incredible. So we urge you to look for ways you can spread this unifying spirit in your own work. Now that we've unified and explored the role that unifying plays in our community COVID response, let's begin to think about connecting. 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 The importance of connecting has been made even more clear across this pandemic, hasn't it? And I know we're all craving the opportunity for more personal connections. And while it can be harder to connect through our personal protective equipment or a virtual visit, it's going the extra mile to break through those barriers that helps us to continue to build meaningful, personal relationships with one another, our patients, and our guests. There are many ways that we can do this. It can be as simple as asking someone how they're feeling, how their day is going, or what they're going to do when they get home. But we can also find opportunities to develop even deeper connections by asking personal questions, ones that help us get to know the person we're connecting with. To help us think a little bit more about this, I'm excited to share a video from ABC 10 about UC San Diego health nurse, Joe Bautista on our COVID team, who's found a unique way to connect with his patients. Knows all too well the power of music, which can lift the spirit beyond the limits of medicine. Well, in this story that is positively San Diego, ABC 10 News reporter Vanessa Paz explains how he has been using songs to connect with patients since the pandemic began. I've always like listened to music and um, and I started uh, teasing the patients and telling them, hey, you owe me a nurse's fee. And they'd be like, what's a nurse's fee? And I'd tell them, it's your favorite song. And it might sound silly, but Joe Bautista, nurse with UCSD for over six years, says it's helped him build connection with his patients in ways he never imagined. She was like, Tennessee whiskey. And I was like, wait, what's, why is that your favorite song? And she's like, I really need a Tennessee whiskey right now. His patients are recovering after testing positive for COVID-19. You're on the phone with them, uh, but you also hear their stressors and their, 
their anxiety and you want to provide them comfort. His job to track and assess their health along the way. The music part. It was just for me to uh, find a connection with each of my patients to make sure that um, I could advocate for them the best I could. In nursing school, he said when patients were sick, feeling uneased, he'd ask about their favorite song and their faces would light up. I'm showing interest in something that they uh, that's personal to them and therefore they can uh, develop that trust with me. And that little effort he's used to connect with patients. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> all worth it because you never know when you'll meet face to face. I'm glad that you're doing so much better. A lot of the patients uh, have been um, in a stressful time and um, just bringing a little bit of joy to their lives and um, uh, was a, a great experience for myself. In case you're wondering, Joe has created a playlist. You can actually find songs like Staying Alive, I'm a Survivor, and House Arrest. You can find a link to that playlist on our website at tednews.com. Vanessa Paz, ABC 10 News. Renee Brown defines connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. It's a two-way experience to connect with someone else. What Joe got from the conversation was just as impactful as what his patients received. You can see it on his face. This is the important piece. Joe shows us that to truly connect, we must be authentic. So I hope that you're finding the elements that inspire you to connect with patients whether it be about hearing stories about their health, their family, their favorite sports teams, or even their favorite song. Try it and see how you feel. Now, let's move on to seeing. 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 When we begin to understand that we're better together, and then we connect in ways that authentically allow us to build meaningful relationships. We open up new possibilities for seeing, ensuring that everyone feels seen, heard, and knows how much they matter. While we work hard every day to ensure that our colleagues, patients, and guests feel seen and known, we also know that there's still much more work to do. The reality is folks tell us they sometimes feel missed or overlooked in our healthcare system. Perhaps that may be related to language barriers, the role or job they have, their socioeconomic status or their race. At UC San Diego Health, we are striving every day to use our seeing lens, our intention, to see in new ways and help everyone we interact with to feel seen. We are committed to equity and justice in our care and in our experience. And we're committed to learning and growing to make sure that that happens. To help us understand more about how we can see and be seen, I am so pleased to introduce you to Betial Asmaram a medical student from UCSD, while simultaneously getting her master's in public health at UC Berkeley, and she's a part of our leadership team consulting on anti-racism. She is sharing her expertise and guiding our organization on anti-racism to be equitable and to be inclusive in everything we do at UC San Diego Health. Hi, Betiel. Hey, Leslie. It's, it's good, good, to you. To, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about seeing. And I just have to say, I am so impressed with all the work you have going on right now and just grateful that you found a few minutes of time today to chat about seeing with me. So thank you. Thank you. I'm more than happy to. Awesome. And so as we think about seeing and our intention of seeing, it's really about ensuring that everyone feels seen, known, and acknowledged, and most importantly, 
to see clearly, you need to look through that lens of equity. Could you share some of the ways we're making sure everyone in our community feels seen and that they have access to the vaccine? Thank you, Leslie. Um, so I just want to start by saying I think it's it's critically important to, for everyone to feel like they're being seen and heard and acknowledged. And I think that's what most people want, particularly for people who have been kept at the margins of society. You know, we are talking about racism in a really public way now nationally, and we've been talking about it after the public murder of George Floyd. But I'll tell you that black and brown people have been raising the flag on, on racism and asking for solutions for a really long time. They just haven't been seen or heard or, you know, their humanity hasn't been elevated to the level to actually do something about it. So I think with the vaccine bus that I'm really lucky to be working with you on, it's it's incredible work because we're taking the vaccine to the zip codes that are most impacted by COVID. You know, we're all familiar with the fact that black and brown, indigenous, Native American people are dying of COVID, you know, at a disproportionate rate compared to white people, but haven't been getting the vaccine at the same rate. So this is really an effort to acknowledge what people have been going through, acknowledge um, how deeply the pandemic has impacted people and say, we're going to do something about it because we see and respect you. And, you know, we're giving people their humanity back. It, it, I'm excited by the new partnership we're forging with the community to create a vaccine bus. Can you share your thoughts on how the bus will allow our community members to feel seen and create increased confidence in wanting to receive the vaccine? I mean, I think the thing I'm most excited about is just having this conversation with our community members, right? And I think this is such a strong opportunity for UCSD to just get out there and listen to people because being seen, part of it is just hearing what they have to say. So Leslie knows we'll be in a meeting with our community partners just to hear from them, you know? What do you need? Where do you want this vaccine bus to go? What other services would be really helpful to go along with the vaccine bus? Um, but all of it really has to be driven by the community members, right? We have to make sure is it, what do you want and make sure that we're delivering on it so that we're not just imposing solutions that we think work, so. You're right. This is going to be a wonderful partnership with our community. Now, in addition to being an ambassador externally, you've been an incredible leader internally at UC San Diego Health, helping us look through that lens of equity. Can you share about some of the work we're doing to make sure all of our team members feel seen and heard? I think it's really similar, even though we're talking about patients before, it's sort of the same thing about you have to listen to people and then you actually have to follow up and do something about what they've told you. So one thing we're working on um, is a reporting system so that people who do ex experience, you know, racism, discrimination, and bias, they have a really clean way of reporting it up, you know, but, I think it's so important to just make sure that people have that venue to speak up about their experiences and to believe people. I think, you know, I will speak personally, but, you know, from my friends' experiences as well, Black and Brown people, you often, you know, again, raise that flag for racism and people are like, well, you know, let's collect some more data. Let's get some more information. Let's make sure the issue is there. But when you see someone, you just, you believe their narrative, right? You, you're giving them their humanity and you're saying, I believe you, we're going to do something about this. And then people are able to sort of come into the workplace and feel really authentically themselves. I loved what you said, that when team members feel seen, they can come into the workplace and feel authentically themselves. And that reminded me of the way we are connecting with and seeing our team members and making sure they feel safe during COVID, both at work and at home. You know, I think as an organization, when we were thinking about how do we actually curve, you know, uh, cases of COVID with our employees and the community as well, um, structural racism really came into that conversation, right? And we started thinking about, well, why do certain people get COVID at different rates, particularly with people of color? And, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, being disproportionately frontline workers, um, utilizing public transportation at higher rates. And 
really living in a multi-generational household. So I think part of really understanding, you know, our team here and the rich experiences they bring is understanding that several of them may live in multi-generational households as, you know, disproportionately people of color and people from low SES backgrounds do. I know my mom doesn't want me to leave the house until I get married and that's a very cultural thing for her. So um, what we were able to do with your help, Leslie, is send um, some of our employees home with a care package that had eight masks in it and a really nice tip sheet about how do you stay safe during the pandemic, understanding that we know you have to leave the house to go to work. We know that, you know, you might need child care services and people may be coming in, but how can we support you in staying safe from COVID? So I think the masks were sort of a small step, but really I hope meaningful and, and helping our employees feel seen and understand and that, you know, we get that everyone comes from different backgrounds and, and want to support them the best way possible. Absolutely. And so, you know, we're spending this short time with our new team members. Hopefully, you know, they're even more excited that they've uh, joined a fantastic team at UC San Diego Health. What could you tell them that would really increase their confidence that um, we're so committed to making sure that they feel seen and heard? Yeah, that's a big one. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because I feel like, uh, people, black, brown, people of color, I feel like sometimes when we enter these spaces and, and come into the workplace, especially big organizations, we just sort of feel like, oh, maybe no one's going to take me seriously. Maybe um, the concerns that I have aren't, you know, really that important. Uh, everyone is talking about anti-racism, right? Like around the country. Um, is this just something that they're saying and not necessarily acting on? But you know, I will say from my time working with the executive team, everyone here is, is great. You know, we have great leaders. Everyone wants to do the right thing. Um, so I would just encourage folks that coming in, new employees, it's not easy. I think we're all in a learning process, but people want to hear what you have to say. So if issues come up, raise them. I know there's always a fear of, you know, retribution. Am I going to get in trouble if I raise the flag on something? Um, and I will say I've just been, you know, and I had those concerns, but I will say I've been inspired in my time working here with the team, knowing that there are people who really care about you and, and who want to do the right thing. So I would just say to everyone, feel empowered to speak up. Um, you know, all eyes are on anti-racism and doing the right thing moving forward. And, you know, it's, it's hard work to speak up, but it's so meaningful at the end of the day when you actually see the changes happen. So I would just say there's a team ready to support you. We, we just have to work together. And I know it won't be easy, but I, I hope it's, you know, people feel a little more confident just speaking up. Well, Betty, I'll thank you so much for joining us today. I have appreciated your partnership and all the work you are doing to bring our intention to life. Having you as a guide and a partner in this meaningful and important work has been incredible. So thank you. I appreciate you a lot. Thank you so much for having me, Leslie. Thank you so much, Betiel. You're guiding us to really take action on this endeavor to create a more just, equitable, anti-racist experience for everyone at UC San Diego Health and truly see others and ourselves the way we want to be seen. And that paves the way for discovering. 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 So when we unify together, we begin to understand how we connect for and with each other and realize the many ways we can see others how they want to be seen. All of this paves the way to discoveries grand or small. Of course, we're discovering in our labs and with our science and medicine, and we're also discovering new possibilities for our interactions, our places and spaces, and the healthcare experience as a whole. We've discovered so much during this time of the pandemic, from the ways we can better connect with patients virtually to provide care with telemedicine, innovative ways to communicate to our community about COVID and safety, to establishing an infrastructure to vaccinate more than 5,000 people a day at our superstation. And there's so much more we discover every day. 
to share some of our new discoveries and caring for our team members, patients, and guests. I'm truly pleased to welcome an innovative leader at UC San Diego Health, Dr. Chris Longhurst. In addition to caring for pediatric newborns in the hospital, Dr. Longhurst is the Chief Information Officer and Associate Chief Medical Officer for UC San Diego Health. Hi, Dr. Longhurst, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me, Leslie. I'm super excited to be here with you. Wonderful. So needless to say, this time of the pandemic has been a huge opportunity for innovation and transformational change. And so when you think about the discoveries we've made across the organization and the rapid action we've taken this last year, what are you most proud of? Leslie, where do I start? Um, I've got at least five things I can talk about uh, related to discovery and innovation and transformation during the course of this pandemic. It might be easiest to think about it uh, over time, right? So when the World Health Organization first declared the, the pandemic in uh, March 11th, um, we put our heads together and we said, you know, our patients are going to need different ways of visiting us. And fortunately, we had a telehealth platform in place that could rapidly scale. And so within a, a two week period, we, we did something completely unexpected, which is we flipped the script and we had more virtual visits than in-person visits almost immediately when people were scared, when people didn't want to leave their home, when they didn't know what was going on and we had limited information. And so being able to serve our patients in that way with telehealth has been a huge innovation. And I think we know that we're gonna sustain some level of telehealth long-term that we never had in the past. In fact, in the first three days of the pandemic, we had more telehealth visits than we had in the last three years. The second innovation that I think is really important to point out is the way that we've used data. So the first week of the pandemic, we built a, a dashboard for the executive team to have deeper insight into our COVID patients, our outpatient visits, and things of that nature. And by the second week, we had opened this up to all of our medical staff so that our physicians knew what was going on. And by the third week, our CEO, Patty Mason, said, why don't we open this up to all health sciences employees? And so every day for the last year, 20,000 health sciences employees have been kept up to date with real-time information about our patients, about our vaccines, about our testing. And that's helped everybody, uh, I think, stay more informed and on top of information. Wonderful. And so when you think about then that progression and your team has been instrumental in, in building these and bringing these discoveries to life, uh, what are some more recent developments? And like you sure. said, you could we could talk for the entire you hour. Up. You could list off 20 things. Um, but what are what are what have you seen evolve that sure. is really just when you think of discovering, it's that example. So I think one of the most novel um, programs that UC San Diego Health has helped to lead was the CA Notify exposure notification system. And this really started last summer with some government advocacy that resulted in UC San Diego being one of two pilot sites in the state for the CA Notify pilot program. And so last fall, we um, showed all of our students the option to turn on this exposure notification system on their smartphones, as well as all of our employees. And within eight weeks, we had seen 50 exposure notifications launched that helped to identify, quarantine, and test both employees and students earlier than they would have been with traditional contact tracing. Based on our early success, the governor of California announced on December 7th that this was going to expand statewide. And UC San Diego Health has continued to be a partner in this statewide expansion, helping the state with ongoing optimization and outcomes research. Wonderful. And so I, I am curious, so those are amazing large scale operations and you get to really witness your team having that discovering mindset every single day behind the scenes as they bring these amazing things to life. What do you notice about how team members bring that discovering mindset, especially on, on your team? Yeah. Well, I'm super fortunate to have an amazing team of quality and information service leaders. And one thing that I would note is that this is a really high functioning team. Everybody's working together towards the same common purpose. And one thing I notice and love about your team, that discovering mindset and spirit is really joyful. 
that that they that they really thrive on that and, and like you said it's that collaboration um can you talk a little bit about how you brought that to life on just your team i think we have a lot to celebrate um and so morale is great because we've done some wonderful things not just over the course of the pandemic but over the the last five years people are proud of the organization they work for they're proud of the department that they work for they're proud of the teams that they work with we celebrate everything from newborn babies to um, job promotions to uh, personal achievements. And so becoming a family at work has really uh, helped to support the high functioning teams. Definitely. I, I love that you mentioned newborn babies. So um, you have many roles here in our organization. Are there any discoveries on a micro or personal or patient interaction level that you've witnessed during this time that you'd like to highlight? I mean, I've been super fortunate because as a practicing pediatrician, I get to continue seeing patients every week. I see newborns, as you mentioned, on the 10th floor of the Jacobs Medical Center and uh, enjoy interacting on the front lines with our nursing staff and our case managers, as well as other leaders in the organization. I also got to vaccinate on the front lines, both at Petco Park and at Remac. And that's really been incredibly gratifying for this pediatrician to give elderly patients their uh, vaccine dose. You know, I love the, the lean healthcare transformation team's idea that UC San Diego Health should have 10,000 problem solvers because we can all help identify both problems and opportunities to solve those problems. You know, another um, innovation during this uh, time of pandemic that I'm super proud of is the expansion of our tiered daily huddles. I think that the tier daily huddles have helped us to problem solve quickly and allowed us to more rapidly propagate information across the organization and escalate issues as needed. Uh, I also think that the uh, most recent story of the Petco Park vaccination superstation mm -hmm. owes some of its uh, success to the tier daily huddles. On January 6th, Patty Brennan and I had a call with county leaders, Nick Mascioni and supervisor Nathan Fletcher. And by Monday, January 11th, we opened that superstation. And doing that actually required getting the schedule online by like Friday, January uh, 8th. And the only reason that that was possible was because we were rapidly um, exchanging information across these two daily huddles and reprioritizing the work of the day. I think that's something that's really going to hold us well as we move out of this pandemic. So speaking of Petco Park, can you tell us a little more how we at UC San Diego Health are leading the way with our vaccination superstations? Absolutely. Petco Park opened January 11th and we were the first vaccination superstation in the state of California. And to this day, we remain the single site that's administered the most vaccines. In fact, one in four San Diegans have been vaccinated at the Petco Park superstation, which is really exciting. A couple of weeks ago, Governor Newsom visited Petco Park to applaud these efforts. And just yesterday, the White House in their daily press briefing mentioned these efforts as well. So I'd also like just to, as you think about discovering, and certainly we are leading the way at UC San Diego Health and in our community, but what, what, what advice would you give or what is the best way for our team members to continue discovering every day in their in their work and in their roles? Oh, that's a great question, Leslie. I, I think there's a number of things that you can do to continue discovering on a daily basis. The first is keeping an open mind, right? Look at things from a different perspective. Maybe we've done things the same way because we've always done things the same way, but keeping an open mind to what are different ways of getting the work done that could be more efficient, that could deliver a better patient experience, that could deliver a better staff experience is what's gonna help us with this ongoing continuous improvement. I think another great point is that discovering rarely occurs by individuals. It occurs by teams and people working together. And so whether it's the tier daily huddles or the people you're working side by side with on the front lines, think every day about how you can build teams that solve problems together. I, I couldn't agree more with everything that you said. I just appreciate that you've created time for us to share how we're leading the way, specifically discovering every single day. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, it's my privilege to be here. Thank you. As Bye. Dr. Longhurst shows us, it is about having an awareness to the possibilities around us and discovering a better way every day. Sometimes this involves a change in process, a change in our systems, or the way we do our work. But we can also find ways to discover joy in this time. 
we began our time together with a reflection on hope. That hope is where we are and where you are. Everything we do has the potential to inspire, to spark new possibilities, to give someone a little more light and health in their day. In so many ways, we have shown how our team members are helping to lead the way for our community and ultimately for the industry. As we close, I want to share one final piece that is a prime example of the ways we are unifying, connecting, seeing, and discovering. When our COVID patients reach milestones such as being extubated and they no longer need a ventilator or they're leaving the hospital, we celebrate with a melody composed through a collaboration by our very own nurses. It's called Oh, the joy. Again, for joining us for this brief check-in and exploration of our experience and tensions. We hope you'll join us for future salons in the coming months. We are so grateful for how you bring unifying, connecting, seeing, and discovering to life every day in order to create a more meaningful and memorable experience at UC San Diego Health. Thank you.